On today's video, we're talking about the film casting process and how to find actors for your next film project. Hey guys, Ryan with Camp Films. Thank you for being here. It's a beautiful day here in North Carolina. I hope you guys are doing great. Fall is in the air. The temperatures are cooling off. I've got the hoodie back on. Loving life. I recently had the opportunity to work as the casting director for a new project I'm working on called Five Doors. That's a working title. It's something I'm putting together with my friend Courtney G. Jones. Courtney is an amazing human being and a filmmaker. He's had many years in the industry. If you want to check out his channel, it is Courtney Jones Creates. Go check him out. Five Doors is going to be really cool. I can't wait to share more about that project with you guys at a later date, but right now I can't say much more about it. We've been working on getting a few different projects off the ground for several years now, so it was great to finally connect with him and actually put together a video project. He lives on the opposite side of the country from me, so it took a little time and effort to work everything out, but we finally met up and got to work together on a project, and it was a really great time. I learned a ton, and one of the main things I learned working on this project was a little bit more about the casting process and how everything should go and flow from beginning to end. So I thought today I would share that insight with you, and if you stick around until the end of the video, I'll share with you guys some things not to do uh, during the casting process. So basically the casting process is searching and finding actors for your film or video project. The first thing you need to do, of course, is have a finished script or story that you're going to start filming and know exactly what you need for your film project. Of course, you can be in the hunt for potential actors beforehand or have somebody in mind, or you can even write a role for a specific actor. Uh, but once you have that finished script and you know what you need for your film, it's time to start looking out in your local area or wherever you're going to be shooting and find actors to fill those roles. You're going to need to first determine the project's needs. Is this going to be a union or non-union project? Uh, normally union actors are going to cost a little bit more, so that's something you need to keep in mind. You'll probably have to go through their agent to book them and so on and so forth. But for a small indie project or what we usually focus on on this channel, no budget projects, you're probably going to want to hire a non-union actor. And there are several out there for you to find in every area. You also need to first establish a filming timeline for when the project is going to be filmed and people are going to need to be on set. That's going to be very important. You're going to need to give people a lot of heads up about when the filming is going to be taking place because people's day jobs, work, school, things like that may get in the way of the filming and they may also be working on another film project at that time. So you need to establish the dates of when you're going to be filming. That's something that you're going to need to include on your casting call sheet when you make it, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Another important thing to have on your casting call sheet is where the filming is going to be taking place. In our instance, we were filming in North Carolina. We only wanted actors from the surrounding area, local North Carolina actors, so we made sure to include that on our casting call sheet as well. You also need to determine if this is going to be a paid project. There are many actors out there that are willing to work for free just to get some experience, but you're probably going to get a whole lot more submissions and higher quality submissions if you offer to pay your actors. Now we were still in the planning process when I created my casting call sheet, so we didn't know exactly how much we were going to be able to pay our actors, but we knew we were going to be paying them something. So on the casting call sheet, I made sure to include that this was a paid project and that we were going to be feeding them on the day of the shoot. Once actors reach out to you a little bit further on in the process, you can either negotiate a payment with them or go ahead and tell them what the project is going to pay. Other than contact information and what exactly you're looking for in the role, whether that's male, female lead, um, extras, whatever roles it is you are looking to cast, be sure to include that on your casting call sheet as well. Once you have all of that information ready to go, you're going to want to create a visually interesting casting call sheet. However you want to make this is up to you, but I would recommend having it match the visual mood and look of the film that you are making. Make sure it's easy to read and has all of the relevant information. I'll put the one up that I created for Five Doors here. Once you have your casting call sheet complete, you love the way it looks, has all the pertinent information on there, you're going to want to post this on local Facebook groups for local actors in your area. There's tons of different uh, acting groups here in North Carolina where I live, so I'm assuming they are where you are as well. Or if you want to go the old school route, you can print this thing up and take it to local campuses, acting schools, and post it on bulletin boards around those areas. Just make sure it has a good contact email there and the submissions should start rolling in. Before you start getting all these submissions, you're going to want to create a spreadsheet or a database of sorts to keep up with all of the submissions that you get during this process. 
And this is also something that you can keep on hand and use for later projects. Keep all of these actors' information in a database, and if a role comes up that matches someone that you remember from your database, you can reach out to them at a later date. So this is a really handy thing to go ahead and create and keep on hand at all times, not just for this current project that you're working on, for, but for future projects as well. This database is also gonna be really handy for you and your team to keep track of everyone and their contact information. And when you sit down with your team, like the director, producers, et cetera, this will give you and your team a great way to look at all the actors and communicate with one another on who you think best fits the role. In our case, me and my team, we all chose the top three choices for each role and then we just discussed from there and narrowed it down. Once you have your top picks for each role, you're going to want to send out advancement emails congratulating them on making it to the next round of the process and telling them that you're interested in seeing more, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where you're either going to want to meet with them and talk to them or have them audition for you either in person or the self-tape. A self-tape is basically when an actor just films themselves acting out lines from your script. And to do this, you're going to want to create sides or excerpts from your script of the lines that the actor will be reading from uh, to audition for your film. Pick an excerpt from your film that you think showcases the range or gives the best overall idea or look at what that actor is going to have to perform when they show up for you on set. Once you start getting audition tapes from your top picks, you're going to be able to whittle down your list a little bit further, uh, discerning who has the look and the acting chops to pull off the role for your film. During this time period, you're going to want to watch for warning signs, which I will touch on a little bit later on in the video. Once you've found your top picks for each role, it's time to send out congratulatory emails and let them know that they got the role if they're still willing to accept it. Now you can set up a meeting with the actor and your team to get to know the actor a little bit better, discuss more details about the role, wardrobe, hair options, and just get to know them a little bit better in general. You can do this meeting in person or over a video conference call. Before we go any further, this process is going to require you to write a lot of different professional sounding emails. If that's something you don't think you're good at, you can use an AI tool like WriteBlogger. I use this all of the time to uh, basically I'll write an email, I'll plug it into WriteBlogger and have it kind of spruce it up a little bit, make it sound a little bit more professional, proofread, all that good stuff. And it just really helps create a more professional sounding and complete email. And after you submitted a few different writing samples to WriteBlogger, it will actually learn your voice and tone so it can write emails more in the style of how you actually write, which is really cool. If you wanna try out WriteBlogger, I'll put a link to it in the description below. I use it all the time. Once you've had your meeting with the actor and everything is still on track and you're 100% sure that this person is still the right one for the role, they've accepted the payment amount, uh, the shooting days are still open for them, now it's time to send them a contract to secure them for the role. Depending on where the actor is coming from, even if they're from your state, they may be so far out of town that you may need to secure lodging for them during the time of the shoot. So that's something you, you'll need to discuss with them as well during uh, your first initial meeting period. And you can also discuss what kind of food they like to eat as well because you're going to want to feed them um, three meals a day during the course of the shoot if it's going to take, take all day, of course. So find out what kind of food they like, find out if they're going to need to have a hotel stay during the time of the shoot, and that's stuff that you can discuss during this period as well. Once the potential actor has signed the contract and they are officially on board to be a part of your film project, now it's time to send them a full version of the script so they can start practicing and learning all of their lines. You're also going to want to send them a call sheet that's gonna have all the pertinent information about where they need to show up the day of shooting, what time to be there, what time breaks are gonna be, uh, who they need to report to, all of that good stuff, wardrobe, makeup, everything you need to put on there. You can find a call sheet template in my Filmmaker's Field Guide collection as well, so check that out. We were able to find some great local actors to work with here in North Carolina for our project Five Doors, uh, Sierra Thrift and Ryan Thompson, two amazing actors from the area. Hopefully I'll be able to show you guys um, some of their work in the future, and hopefully I'll get to work with these guys again, but just absolute professionals, can't say enough great things about these people, and it's all a testament to the casting process and just finding the right person for the role. Once you've hired the actor, of course, that is the end of the process, and now it's on to the production phase where you're going to meet them on set, and get this thing done and filmed. But as promised, let's talk about a couple of the potential pitfalls you can run into in the casting process. Number one is to make sure to give yourself plenty of time to find the right person for the role. 
uh, you run out of time to either coordinate with the dates, and, and let's say you, you pick somebody, but you took too long to notify them that they were the one for the role, and then they moved on and took a job somewhere else, or those dates just uh, something came up and they were no longer available. Uh, be sure to have a backup just in case if something like that happens. So if the person you initially pick falls through for whatever reason, you can contact your backup and have them uh, step up to take that role. Also, during the initial process when you're sending out emails and you're communicating with these actors for the first time, watch out for potential warning signs like flakiness, taking too long to respond to your emails, or not following directions. You would be amazed at how many actors um, we had actually chosen for the male role. And as the process went on, I started kind of figuring out that maybe they weren't from the North Carolina area. Even though my casting call uh, specifically said they needed to be from North Carolina, uh, as we got further into the process, I started learning that, you know, like maybe this guy's from Philadelphia. And uh, even after reiterating to them several times that they had to be from North Carolina. They just, for some reason, didn't disclose that information to me. I guess they thought they would just drive that far or whatever, uh, but that's something to watch out for. Another thing is always be upfront with the actors about payment, food, uh, the dates, all that stuff. You don't wanna like hold back any information from these people and then the, you know, at the last minute, pull the rug out from under and make, oh, this is not a paid project. So don't do that to people, that's really dirty. And one final thing I'll say is, you're going to be creating a database of all these potential actors, and they're taking time to submit their headshots, their resumes, um, uh, even going as far as to audition for you in some cases, if they make it to that far in the process. Be sure to write all of these people back one by one, don't forget anyone. Just make sure to write everyone back a thank you email for taking the time to submit their information to you. Uh, if they auditioned, be sure to tell them how great they did and that you just found someone a little bit better for the role. You don't want to be the reason someone gives up on their dreams or feels demoralized. Just do the best you can to write them a professional email thanking them uh, for their time and their effort and letting them know that you'll keep their information on file and if anything in the future comes up uh, that they might be a fit for, that you will reach out to them and have them audition for some future roles. So just keep them in the database. You don't want to burn any bridges or like I said, be the reason someone gets deflated or ends up you know, thinking they're not good enough. Uh, be kind, always be kind to everyone. Thank them for their time and keep their information on file for any future projects. That's pretty much everything I can think of as far as the casting process goes. If there's something you think I missed, let me know in the comments below. And of course, if you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like. I hope you guys enjoyed my last video, No Budget Filmmaking for Dummies. If you didn't watch far enough into the video, you may have missed that I submitted a challenge to you guys. Uh, go back and watch that video. You'll notice that the video includes tons of different lighting setups and scenes for each part of the video. Just choose one of those lighting setups and scenes and see if you can recreate them. Post a link to your work in the comments of that video. So before you go, be sure to check out that video. You can watch it right here somewhere. I'll post it somewhere. We just hit 40,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all of your support over the years. And once we get to 50,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a pretty cool giveaway. So stay tuned for that. Once you have all of that information ready to go, you're going to put together a... Once you have all of that information ready to go, you're going... Ugh. Once you have all of that information ready to go, you're going to want to create a... Oof. Ugh.